As many of you know, the Internet of Things, or IoT, is a hot topic these days. IoT is a concept centered around having a connected world that can provide data from sensor and other related connected technologies. Once this data is captured, it could be analyzed by server clusters running Hadoop for trends and patterns. For our demonstration here, we'll focus on the endpoint, which will be delivering content over to this client platform here. Uh, the client platform will be a tablet. It's a Dell Venue 11 Pro running a Windows embedded 8.1 industry image. Uh, there's a custom program to handle the wireless communication between the microcontroller and the various sensors located on that unit as well. So from the microcontroller, I've connected uh, several sensors to this battery-powered microcontroller. So there aren't any physical cables going from the tablet to the microcontroller. It's all um, communicating via wirelessly, and we'll demonstrate that here in a minute. Um, so there's a C++ program running on this, on this microcontroller to capture and trigger different events depending on what it sees. With the importance of monitoring water, water usage and energy consumption these days, um, these types of sensors are becoming more and more important. The motion IR detector can be used to sense motion in areas that only require light when someone is present, or it can be used to turn on faucets when hands are detected underneath the sink. The water pressure sensor can be used to track the amount of water being used in certain areas, particularly in areas uh, such as California where a drought is in place and the amount of water being used needs to be regulated or, or at least tracked. If we move back over to the client-side tablet, um, we could see how we can expose some of the features that are on that C++ program running on our microcontroller. Uh, but first, we have to establish communi wireless communication between the tablet and the microcontroller. So we'll go ahead and set up our wireless controller here. We'll open up the port. Um, you, know, you have this area here that's basically monitoring um, the water pressure coming through and since we don't have a water source connected to it um, it's obviously at zero liters per hour uh, we'll be able to still simulate the pressure going through there but we'll need to use air pressure uh, for that sense but first off um, just to make sure that we are indeed uh, getting any type of communication to and from that wireless microcontroller um, the C++ program has been uh, designed to be able to receive an, an active high um, to turn on an LED on that microcontroller or an active low to turn it off. So let's first test out that it indeed does work on that end. And so we'll hit send here. And at that point, we should see our LED turn on, which it does. That yellow one there indicates that we did receive that active high for that LED. Now, if we want to turn that one off, we go back to our uh, data send area and hit a zero to make it active low. I'll hold off on hitting it until I get here, and there we go, now it's off. So the other LED that we have here, um, the green one there, is for motion detection. So to be able to confirm that we are indeed um, getting some type of sensing out of that IR motion detector. So if I just put my hand in front of it, we see that it starts blinking green. Um, and you can continue to do that. And so that kind of indicates, you know, those scenarios that were previously mentioned where if your hands were underneath the sink or um, if you needed to track motion to provide lighting into a certain room, um, you, could, you could facilitate that using this type of sensor. From a uh, data standpoint, uh, storage data standpoint, so um, we see there's a file up top here. And so this, this program, I've written it to also output to a, um, to a file. And so we, we could see the, the file continues to grow there, um, and that'll continue to grow for the duration that this program is running. Um, so at this point, we have zero liters per hour. Um, if we were to go up to our water pressure gauge and we started to apply pressure manually, so I'm going to try to do this with the camera and... So if we scroll down now, we should be able to see 
the change, and we see it there, so we see the change there in data. Um, more importantly, um, so if we shut this down, we take a look at the amount of data that's been collected in that short amount of time. If we stop that and open the file up, and we start to scroll down, we see that there's a lot of zero liter per hour data, um, but we also see some um, data that's non-zero per hour data. The reason it's predominantly zero um, liter per hour is because um, for the most part there wasn't an input pressure being applied to that sensor, um, that water pressure sensor. Uh, but when we did apply a pressure, we see um, uh, figures such as a 2112, uh, 1160, 2048, uh, and so um, those represent um, time frames or moments where we did where we did apply a pressure. Uh, but from a from a data standpoint alone, it um, it's quite a quite a large amount of data. And so um, what we what we find is you know you need some type of um, back end um, server infrastructure to to try to um, apply some analytics to this. And uh, so for our next segment, I think um, what we'll do is we'll take a file um, such as the one we see here and pass this to a uh, back-end uh, MapReduce session to be able to make, make some sense and, and um, apply some analytics and find some trends.